marching and raising our voices in Oklahoma City since May 30th, I believe it is now. We are over a month into this and it has not stopped yet, has it? The Oklahoma County criminal injustice system is attempting to silence us by attacking our defenseless adolescents that stand with us, by throwing them in the horror show that is the Oklahoma County Jail, by denying their Eighth Amendment constitutional right to bond and bail while they are have pending uh, litigate criminal indictments and, and charges that they are innocent of until proven guilty. People out there right now don't look like me, and so since you don't look like me, you won't understand what it is to live like me. Uh, but with that being said, man, it is hard, it is hard for us to be able to express ourselves and for us to speak up. And I often tell people that I am not tired of being black, but I'm tired of the way that I'm treated because I am black. Woo! Just because of the way I look. Like these kids are not much older than me. They're two, three years, and you know, they're like my brothers and sisters. Not by blood, but you know, those are my brothers and sisters. I'm seeing a lot of the same faces in so many different spaces and each of you all have literally been answering the calls to actions that we put out. Um, and it seems like we're making some waves because yeah. some people are concerned that we are demanding justice. Yeah. Um, it seems like the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office and, and maybe the DA and a few other people are worried that the people literally say that we demand justice on the behalf of those that are the warriors that are speaking up and simply saying that black lives matter. Yeah. 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 I don't understand why that's scary. I don't understand why they feel like they need to intimidate. I don't understand why they need to create political prisoners out of 18 and 19 and young 20 year olds um, who are simply standing and holding the front line. Maybe they're concerned because they know what I know, that our young people like Amaya and Jasmine and Joshua um, are the ones that are actually going to bring forth the change. Um, I am so privileged and very humbled to be amongst these amazing young people who are courageous and tenacious in all of their might. And so it's very easy for me to speak this morning um, but my heart is broken because yesterday I had to watch three of them literally walk into the Oklahoma County Jail, that albatross of just literal, a dehumanizing experience because it said that they were literally inciting a riot. They said that they were terrorists. And in Oklahoma, how offensive is it yeah, when we literally yeah. mean People who were speaking up for justice yeah. and simply saying that we demand humanity for ourselves in black and brown and queer and Muslim skin yeah. on a daily basis. We simply do not want to have to deal with the tyranny of white supremacy and racial injustice. That's yeah. all they're saying yeah. is that their lives matter. Maybe those of you all that are here today agree with me that all black lives matter. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe those of you all that are here today understand that there shouldn't be babies and families and mothers and fathers sitting in cages at the border when they're literally trying to seek safety. Right. Maybe you believe in me that my black trans brothers and sisters and brown persons and queer persons should not lose their lives simply because people are literally offended by someone loving who they are and loving someone else and being their authentic self. Maybe you all in white skin will begin to speak a little bit louder and speak a little bit longer and saying that I too believe that all black lives matter. I was thinking about what it feels like to be terrorized. And if you're, if you're black, then you've been living with terrorism probably your whole entire life. You know, um, just a few weeks ago, I had two cops. One cop pulled up a shotgun one was behind me. Looked over, looked me eye, looked me in the eye, and the other one got behind me. And they followed me from Northwest 23rd all the way to my street past MLK on Northeast 23rd. And when I pulled into my into my house, they drove past. 
There's no reason why I should be terrorized like that. There's no reason why I should be followed to my house. No reason. You know, and like everybody else has said, uh, we know in Oklahoma City what, what terrorism is. And what those kids were doing is not terrorism. And on top of that, you know, I, I, you know, I'm a business owner, so I think about, you know, big, big businesses and what it means to lose those things. But I'm also someone who, who, who experienced a house fire, and we lost everything in the house fire. And the first thing everybody asked us was, "Did you make it out okay?" We all made it out okay. We never lost our lives, right? So, what's more important, a life or or, or a building or, or a piece of property, right? right. Yeah. So, so we should think about that because the issue is not about buildings, it's about lives that are being lost. And when kids, and when we're out here protesting, we're protesting because we have compassion and we're hurting behind people who are actually dead and can't come back. They can't, that's, the, that's it, they can't come back. And so I think at the end of the day, we need to think about what it really means to have a life and to lose a life. What it really means to, to be terrorized. My nephew is five years old right here. And I brought him here on purpose because he is a young black boy who will grow to be a young black man. And I don't want him to have to experience the terrorism that I've experienced. The first time I had a gun pulled on me by an officer, I was his age. I was five years old. I'll never forget it. When you put price on a person's head, it seems familiar. Like you have 18, 19, and 20 year old children standing on an auction block. Mm -hmm. right. Right. It feels like you're telling them that they still need to be a slave to the systems of white supremacy and that they their freedom is really not in existence. Right. Yeah. And so if you agree with me on that, please make the calls. Please make the emails overwhelm all of their systems and say, let them go. Yeah. Let my people go. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. then tell them that there should not be charges of terrorism. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. And that they did not incite a riot. Nope. And I want to be very sensitive and I'm cognitive of what I'm saying. Yesterday, a group of lawmakers made a statement that they stand with law enforcement. And we've never really said that we were anti-police. We've said we're anti-police brutality Woo, yeah. and simply said stop killing us. <laughs> that we should be able to survive a traffic stop. Right. And my heart is also hurting for families of officers who were interacting in a traffic stop yes. and a white person who seemed to be, now this was just my perception, which, which was literally probably on some narcotic substance. And so they were totally impaired, made a very costly and criminal decision yeah. and literally has taken the life of another human and another one holds in the balance. And so my honest prayers have been for those two officers and for their family. Yeah. But for lawmakers to literally conflate the situation of another person's tragedy, shame on you. Yeah. Yeah. Shame on you. Yeah. Yeah. They talk yeah. about the Oklahoma standards. You gotta know that that can't be it. That's not what I wanna stand for. Yeah. And so there was no one, that person was not, and I wanna tell you white people, I've seen interactions with the police when the person does not have melanin in their skin. And there's a lot of privilege. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. There's a lot of arrogance. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of defiance. Yeah. But now we're saying we simply don't want to happen to us what we've been screaming about forever to happen to anyone, even those police officers in Tulsa. Yeah. And so we certainly do not condone, condone that type of behavior and that criminal act but the two are not connected 
except in the fact that we say you should be able to survive a traffic stop. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. We, everyone, should be able to survive in interaction with the police. Yes. And also when we're saying defund them, we're saying we allocate the funds yeah. Yeah. equitably. Yeah. Yeah. inside no, their no, building that we don't need no. militarized police divisions no. sitting here um, literally not protecting and serve yes. but causing anxiety and terror for our young people because of the interactions that they've had. That is what we are asking for and that is the reason why we say Black Lives Matter. to reduce or remove the bond. Tell them to let those children go. Yes. And tell them that you believe that Black Lives Matter. And, and if you feel like going just an extra inch, and I want to tell you that black folks, we've been having to go an extra inch in building this country for over 400 years. Yes. And so if you want to be a little bit more uncomfortable, which I don't mind asking you to be, you will also get in touch with the lawmakers who said they stand with the law yeah, enforcement yeah. and ask them why don't they understand and believe that Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Yeah. Our voices and our pleas and our demands for justice are not going to fall to the tyranny or intimidation of the state in any manner. We're already dealing with state-sanctioned violence. We are not terrorists because we are literally not coming towards human beings. We are literally standing for our own humanity. Yeah. Yeah. And so maybe some of those that are in power, that are elected officials, need to go back to a seventh grade civics class and understand exactly what terrorism, yeah. intimidation, and ethics are. And maybe then they will understand why we say Black Lives Matter. We're not, this is going to be the end of today. Um, like I said, when they seem to be a little bit worried, they put over what I saw at least 50, 60 um, officers out on the street today. I don't normally see that many. We're over policed, we know that. But today, they said they were a little bit concerned about what was going to happen. Apparently, they didn't want us to be able to walk into our own house. Yes. They didn't want us to be able to ask for a conversation and an explanation from someone who was elected to also serve. And so when you are a public servant and you don't want to have conversations and you don't want to answer and you don't want to be held accountable, that's problematic. But today, it's okay because we're going to focus on getting all of those that are being held as political prisoners inside the Oklahoma County Detention Center out, and then we'll see where we're gonna show up and raise our voices again. Yeah. Thank you so very much.